Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be returning back to TRAPPIST-1, the system discovered a few years ago that seems to have seven terrestrial or very Earth-like uh, planets that basically surprise the world. In this video specifically we're going to be talking about a new study that uh, talks about this planet, TRAPPIST-1G. So let's discover what's going on here and welcome to What the Math. So if you were to take a look at the TRAPPIST-1 system in simulations like, for example, um, Universe Sandbox, uh, you would actually even see where the habitable zone is and which of the planets are in the habitable zone. Uh, we believe that these three, specifically E, TRAPPIST-1E, TRAPPIST-1F and TRAPPIST-1G, uh, and possibly also TRAPPIST-1D, are sort of the best candidates for, um, well, maybe somewhat Earth-like conditions. But for the longest time, um, we weren't really sure about what they're made out of. And so a, a study that was um, published a few months ago has actually established that TRAPPIST-1, B, C, D, um, E, and F were all most likely terrestrial planets. In other words, they were worlds that most likely contained rocky surfaces and uh, resembled something like Mars or Venus or Mercury or, or possibly, if we're lucky, Earth. And um, many simulations that were done by various scientists uh, presented these planets as either basically ice worlds or hot lava worlds, um, or at least very hot worlds, or possibly worlds filled with liquid water. Uh, but we weren't really sure about one of the more exciting planets, the most massive planets specifically, uh, TRAPPIST-1G, which is this right here. This planet um, is very, very close to Earth in mass. It's only uh, maybe 10% or 14% more massive, 1.14 masses of the Earth. And at the same time, its actual radius is also relatively similar to Earth, um, just a little bit, like 10% uh, larger than Earth. And to us, that meant that this particular planet is very Earth-like in terms of both density and maybe even composition. The only problem is that we actually thought that maybe this is actually uh, what's known as a super Earth. In other words, maybe it's actually a gas-like planet. And uh, for this reason, we actually had to try to find a way to study its atmosphere or at least find a way to see what's happening here. And uh, what this recent study discovered, a study by uh, Hannah Wakeford from the Space Telescope Science Institute was that, um, well, we now believe that the atmosphere of this planet doesn't contain any hydrogen and most likely changed over time. In other words, um, if the atmosphere changed, it's probably not a um, gas giant. It's probably not a gas dwarf or whatever you would call this. Um, it's basically not a planet that has hydrogen atmosphere. It's most likely a planet that actually has its atmosphere changed over time, similar to how Earth's atmosphere changed as well. And for this study, they've actually used the Hubble telescope to try to see what we can actually detect here. And what they've discovered is that, well, um, it seems to indicate that the actual atmosphere of this planet evolved. And evolution of atmosphere is something that um, is sort of native to terrestrial planets. Uh, we know that Martian atmosphere evolved, we know, we know that Venusian atmosphere evolved, and obviously Earth as well, because you know we didn't have any oxygen, for example, but now we do. And this, of course, suggested that um, TRAPPIST-1G most likely has both atmospheric and also geological activities on its surface. So once again, something that usually happens on a terrestrial world. I mean, we don't really know what happens inside Jupiter, like if it actually has a core and if it's a solid core. We don't really know if there's like Jupiter quakes. It's something that's possible, but there's no way for us to find out just now. But we do know that Mars has quakes and uh, so does Earth and so does the Moon. So many of these objects will probably have geological activities and it's very likely that TRAPPIST-1G is full of these activities. But however, there are obviously some challenges here. So one of the challenges, first of all, is that the current assumption is that due to the distance from the parent star, this planet um, is currently, the way it stands, um, is at minus 67 degrees Celsius. In Space Engine, 
it's actually even colder at minus 116 degrees Celsius. And that's because of the actual distances involved here. Now, if, however, this planet um, has very thick atmosphere, like for example, let's give it uh, one atmosphere of pressure just to see how it changes, um, it might actually get uh, more actual temperature needed to maybe even melt the liquid water here, in which case it might then be a liquid water like this one. However, uh, all of this is still kind of speculative, it's still an assumption. We don't really know what's happening here. But what we do know is that due to its size and mass and very, very similar sort of density to Earth, it's probably very Earth-like in terms of actual structure. Um, it's, it could be actually a water world like what you see here, but um, even if it's a water world, it still will have a relatively thick mantle and most likely a metallic core. And um, if it actually has metallic core, there's a chance for it to have magnetosphere, which might protect it from the biggest danger in the system, the very, very active star TRAPPIST-1. These stars, the red dwarfs, are actually really active. They have a lot of flares. They produce a tremendous amount of energy, as you can see just happening there right now. And for this reason, we believe that these stars are not super safe. Uh, they're probably some of the more unsafe stars, and they also tend to change a lot. They actually have a dramatic sudden increase in temperature, and then they'll actually decrease again. Uh, but for TRAPPIST-1, it's surprisingly cold, actually. The temperature of TRAPPIST-1 is only about 27 degrees Celsius, but what these scientists discovered is that the, it also has a tremendous amount of dark spots, dark patches, just like our sun. Here's actually a photo from NASA of um, several such spots. And uh, normally these are formed by the actual magnetic lines of the star. And we believe that about 3% of the surface of TRAPPIST-1 is covered in these things. And these things are really hot. Uh, they're usually about two to 3,000 degrees hotter than the actual star. And so um, all of this suggests to us that TRAPPIST-1 is one crazy star. It's probably very active, it's probably uh, very explosive, and once in a while raises the temperature of those planets uh, by a few degrees, but only for maybe like a few minutes or so. So it does have a lot of flares, it has a lot of radiation that it produces. But at the same time, uh, one of the recent studies uh, by uh, one of the professors from Harvard, Professor Loeb, um, discovered that it also seems that uh, these particular stars, these red dwarfs, don't really produce enough visual light for things like plants or uh, essentially photosynthesis to uh, take effect. Uh, so if there is life, it's probably not photosynthetic life. And if we do come here one day to settle, we really are not going to benefit from bringing any plants because they're not going to get enough energy from the star to actually survive unless those plants are genetically modified to somehow use um, infrared or ultraviolet uh, radiation. But on the other hand, um, the scientists who published this paper also kind of um, included a warning. And the warning here is that, well, you have to remember that these planets are relatively close to the parent star. The distance here is very, very low. Like if I were to compare this to where Earth is, so this is where Earth is, and this is where all of those other planets are, much, 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 much closer to the parent star. And because of this, they are actually kind of covered by the star's atmosphere. And some of these stars, including this one, actually do possess uh, things like water vapor and um, obviously hydrogen and helium. And so we have to be aware of these false signals, basically, because if we suddenly detect water vapor, it doesn't mean that we're seeing this water vapor from a planetary atmosphere of beautiful TRAPPIST-1G. Maybe, just maybe, there is actually no water here at all. Maybe it's completely devoid of water. And maybe the water vapor is actually coming from the star. And so we have to be careful. But uh, luckily, the technique that uh, these scientists developed is actually really good at um, basically distinguishing between water vapor from the star or water vapor from the atmosphere of a planet. But it's good that they mentioned this because a lot of uh, modern scientists sometimes forget to actually account for that. And so overall, it's actually a super interesting study. But I guess our next step is to find out what's happening with the last planet, TRAPPIST-1H. Is it just a cold, dead, icy world like we have right here? Or is there something really cool going on? But for what we know so far about TRAPPIST-1G, it suddenly has increased its chance of being possibly the most Earth-like planet we've discovered so far. 
Now, if we actually add a little bit of water here and then scroll down to where this simulation calculates so-called Earth similarity index, you will discover that surprisingly, the Earth similarity of this object is close to 96%. This is actually higher than any object in our solar system, including Mars. Um, for comparison, Mars Earth similarity index according to the simulation is only about 65% and um, it's something that might be very trivial and it basically uses things like mass, density and temperature to try to calculate this. Uh, but it does show you that um, according to this new study, TRAPPIST-1G is probably one of the most unusual but possibly also most Earth-like objects we've discovered to date. Very, very similar in density, very similar in uh, even maybe temperature, depending on the atmospheric pressure here. But most importantly, it's in a system that has six other planets that might also give us a chance of finding that new Earth 2.0. However, one thing to remember is that it's super dark here. The sun, the star uh, TRAPPIST-1 doesn't produce enough visual radiation. And and so standing on the surface of this planet, the actual daylight, or I guess midday, would look kind of something like this. It would be very, very, very dim, very dark. Only approximately 2% of the uh, actual visual sunlight would reach the planet. And so it's kind of depressing. It's not very beautiful. But nevertheless, that's still one of those objects that I would honestly love to visit one day. Anyway, on that note, uh, hopefully we'll discover more things about TRAPPIST-1 in, in the future. And if you still haven't subscribed, uh, do subscribe because we're going to come back and talk about this in one of the future videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of you that support me on Patreon. It does help me tremendously. And I, I'm really thankful for all the support that has been given to me over the months and years. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.